So how do you put this back together to make the, the starter rope work? Well, let me show you the way I was taught. And there are several different variations of this, but basically you gotta get the spring back in against the, the pressure that it, it creates so that it'll recoil. So in this particular model, there's a holder built into this plastic piece. And we'll want to get the spring going inside of the initial circle that we make. That's, that's the key. That's how the recoil process works. Um, very smart to use a light duty pair of work gloves here to keep from cutting yourself. The spring can come out and bite you or have a burr in it and cut you as you're rubbing it here. It's, 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 um, it takes rather, rather a lot of pressure from your thumbs to, to hold all this together. So if there's any little sharp part on there, your thumbs will find it. So a nice light duty pair of work gloves are definitely recommended for this work. We want to get this piece of the spring situated over the hole kind of like that so that it'll grab when we place it down in here and and this will be what holds the the pressure of the spring and allows it to load up and after we let go of the pull rope that's what sucks the rope back in so we want to make sure before we put all this other back on that that it caught right and that will actually have a recoil so we'll just give it a little test spin and yet it comes back by itself so that means everything so far has been hooked up properly i'm going to take this off because these are a lot smaller parts to deal with and it's just easier without gloves on so that washer should line up or those washers should line up like so these dogs face like this kind of they're kind of molded to fit in the in the frame here like that line our washers back up you should have the spring on the bottom of this cup bolt goes through the top and these little raised up areas are what actually throws these out right whenever when you pull the rope through centrifugal force this will spin and when it spins it forces these out so we want to line these up with the two little uh, slots right here that were designed for it and we, hopefully we can get it all going straight and get our bolt threaded the first time sometimes this doesn't work perfectly the first time but that's should be allowed to throw those out and whenever it comes back they should go back in their hole just like that and we'll cinch it down just a little bit and up next I'll show you how to put the uh, pull rope in before we put the pull rope back in it normally will be frayed if you break one or if you buy a new one and have to cut a cut both ends of it to fit it back in the handle you'll, you'll have to deal with a frayed rope and taking that frayed rope and, and feeding it back through here is just not the best way so I'll show you a, a couple tricks of, of how to deal with this uh, one is to get the a good lighter and set this to flame and get it to melt and once you've got it melting it's pretty smart to take a glove and pull it off this way and kind of puts a, a sharp edge on the end of the rope, if you will. Kind of a point. You want the end of it to be smaller than the rope. Right now, mine's a little bigger, so I'm gonna keep doing this until it comes kind of to a point, almost like a, an arrow. It's just about perfect. Another thing, you can heat up the edge here, and that will actually make the rope less flexible at the end so whenever you're trying to, to feed it in it'll actually stay very straight you'll see that the rope naturally wants to bend but right here on the end it's uh, it stays pretty straight whenever you apply a little bit of heat to these to 
the outside part of it. So that's just a way to, to, to keep it straight as you try to put it in here rather than it trying to dip down. So next, we want to turn this five times in the counterclockwise position. And after we turn it five times from the counterclockwise position, we want to line up the hole here with the hole that's right here. I don't know if my light will allow you to see it. It's right there. All right, once we get those two lined up, we'll probably put something in there to keep it from turning where we can work with both hands and push it through and tie a knot. So here's how we do this. Five times, one, two, three, four, five. Some people do six, some folks do seven. I like to start with five and then line these two up. I think I can probably hold it with one hand today and stick this through here and line them up. So yeah, there we go. All right, so I got it to go through both, all right? A pair of needle nose pliers is the, the best tool to retrieve the end of that rope and pull it all the way through. Um, just for safety measures, you don't want to break your spring here or lose it, and you do have to tie a knot. Hard to tie a knot with one hand, so you can stick any sort of tool, small screwdriver here to, to hold that in place while you tie the knot. Just a, a simple hard knot at the end of the rope like so and that'll hold the rope in place and we'll pull the rope through take out our take out our piece and it'll recoil and we're ready to go